Hi coloring friends, welcome back to my channel. I was just sitting and enjoying some coloring this morning and I thought that I would just turn on the camera and do a little chat while I'm coloring. So I am working in, I'm working on this page here, the woolly worms, which I did show in the pages I wanted to work on this month. And that is in the Zen Doodle Coloring Cuddle Bugs uh, by Jeanette Wummel. So let me go ahead and just put us a little closer here. All right, we'll give that a try and see how that goes. I'm going to have to remember to move myself around a little bit as I color. Um, so I am working. I decided to just color with marker in this on this page. This paper uh, it's definitely thicker than Amazon paper. It has a nice, it works well with markers, I think. Um, and I'm using the Ohuhu uh, set. I can't remember which one this is. Uh, yeah, I cannot remember the name of it. Um, but these are the colors I have in the set anyway. <laughs> and um, I did already do these leaves with uh, alternating the two orangey colors here and the opposite leaf I think I'm going to do uh, these two yellows here because I think if you just block out the rest of the colors there that's like fall in a little package right there so and I really wanted to this this to look like fall leaves um, I want to do the sky in a pale blue but I don't think I have the blue I want to use on this so I may need to move into my Cali Art Marker set for that, um, but let me see, I need 33 and 35, and let me see, I'm trying to see which one my darker color is, so 33 is my darker, so I'm going to keep the darker at the tips like I did with the other one. Um, that'd be 33. Okay. All right. And away we go. Um, so yeah, this paper is working really well with markers and I just felt like coloring with markers, to be honest. I think, uh, you know, sometimes it's just fun to change up. I've been doing a lot of pencils, so just nice to pick up something different and still be adding color to a page. I can definitely get caught up with, oh, you know, it has to be this beautiful shaded masterpiece and it really doesn't. It is still, uh, still adding color to a page. It's still, um, creating something or adding to something that somebody else created really to their illustration but so my plan I am going to do I think I'm probably going to try to still do the woolly worms in a colored pencil because I want it to look furry <laughs> fluffy and I'm not sure I can achieve that with marker my marker blending skills are not just not there I'm not even sure I can achieve it in colored pencil as well as I want to but I'm going to give it a try uh, so I'm going to look up a picture of one and um, try and get my colors down color selection down with the colored pencils, it's going to be, I know the black's going to be a challenge because I'm not going to want to do just straight black. It's probably going to need to be maybe a, like a charcoal, a deep gray and a black all together just so I can get that fluff look. And then I need to look at the brown tones that I need for the other stripes on these little guys. Oh, 
All right, there's one leaf done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop in the alternating color just um, so that's in here and you can see what, get a better idea because I'm probably not gonna color for, I'm not gonna finish this page. I can tell that right now. Um, I do have to go to work, so. I'll just do a little bit and then I will save the rest for another time. So my plan with the leaves and a little bit of the background is um, anywhere there's the little designs here, I'm going to take um, let's see if I can grab it. It's right under me here because my office is a mess. Um, I'm going to use these metallic accent paints by Art Philosophy. And I have, I'll go ahead and open it and show you. So I have this beautiful orangey and then a nice goldy yellow. And I'm going to pop those in the, uh, little design areas on the leaves. So it'll be a, you know, a little bit of a glowy accent. And then the background, I wanted to do a very pale blue. And then all these polka dots that are back here, I wanted to use that pale metallic blue paint on so that it has a little bit of uh, sparkle in it too. So that's the plan. And this paper is nice enough that I think it will handle the uh, water fairly well. The watercolor paint. So that is the plan for this page. And I'm hoping it turns out the way I'm envisioning it. And that's why I wanted to do the darker color on the uh, portions of the leaf with a little design because I think that's going to help that metallic paint pop a little bit more rather than putting it on top of a lighter color. So that's the method to my madness here. I hope everyone's having a nice September so far. We are, it is just flying by for me. I cannot believe we are coming up on the last week, really. Um, this week starts officially fall. I think that's the, oh, it's the 21st or the 22nd. So... I do have, if you saw my, uh, my colorful summer bingo, I do have one more page I really want to get to for that. Um, and I need to get to it. I really should have been working on that instead of this, but that one I had planned on using watercolor pencils, which I really have never used before. So of course I am procrastinating and doing this instead. Um, so we'll see. I kind of wanted to film, uh, film my attempt with watercolor pencils, but again, another reason I'm procrastinating it because I'm not sure how that's going to go, but you know, we all start somewhere. Um, and if nothing else, I'd like to show that you know, it's okay to try new things and it's okay to not get it just right the first time or the second time or the third time. Um, the, the important thing is that you give it a go and keep trying because that's how, that's the only way any of us are going to improve is if we keep at it. really just trying to pump myself up for the uh, fluff coloring on the woolly worms because <laughs> I'm worried about getting that right right now.
not worried, worried, but you know, you want it to turn out nice. That's one of those things, animal fur and um, water, bricks and rocks, all that kind of stuff that has a texture to it is uh, very much a challenge for me still. I'm still learning. Um, and even when you've done it once or twice, it's still... I guess for some people, I'm sure it comes naturally. And they just know exactly what to do, but I always feel like I have to figure it out every time. <laughs> is one reason I really appreciate YouTube and the coloring uh, channels that are out there because it is extremely helpful to um, kind of check into them and see how other people do it. Not that you have to copy exactly how other people do it, but sometimes it get, gives you a little spark and then you can take that and make it your own. Oh boy, I am getting warm. We, uh, we turned our air off and because we've had a, a couple of, you know, 70 degree ish days, and then in the nighttime it gets cooler, so it's comfortable. But today I think it's going to be quite warm again. It already feels like it's over 70, and it is 9 o'clock in the morning, so I am starting to feel a little warm. I'm going to try to hold out though because. I feel like once we make that move to turn the air off and open up the windows, it's really hard to go back. Especially now that it's so expensive to run the air. Just want to not rely on it. We're going to try to hang tough here. So let's see, um, plans for the rest of the month on the channel are, like I said, I'd like to try the watercolor pencils. Um, and I have a set that's not, um, not anything I've seen anyone talk about. My daughter got it for me in a mall, um, one maybe two birthdays ago, which makes it even worse that I haven't even touched them. But um, like I said, I've been intimidated to dive into it. Um, but yeah, I'd like to show them and see how they work and show my attempts at it. So that um, hopefully will be coming up soon. I have a... Uh, a coloring outside the book episode to work on, um, which I do have all the supplies I need for. So, um, it's just a matter of getting going with it. Um, I think I am going to switch to the branch here just to do something a little different. Um, I think I'm going to go with the brown gray and if I really need to I can always uh, shade over that with some colored pencil to deepen it up in areas if I need to so that is 104 all right sorry you're getting the whole process here <laughs> the whole color selection and everything um, 
let's see so coloring outside the book yes um and it it's going to be not halloween themed but have a well it's going to be based on a more halloween season character put it that way and i'm not going to say anything more for one thing because i'm still trying to figure out exactly how i'm going to accomplish it <laughs> it was a suggestion from my daughter actually for how i should do this next one so Now even more so, I want to pull it off so she can have what I make in the video. Um, so that's coming up. I have, I have pulled, a, well, I did a page and I had pulled a colors that I used for, to make gold in the picture and color things gold with uh, Sioux color pencils. And that is one combination that I have not seen done with that, that or any budget pencil set. And I feel like Sioux color is very similar to some of the other budget sets out there with regarding what colors they, color options they offer. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to do a little, just a quick video on how I colored gold using Sioux color pencils and what that color combination is. Um, so I'm hoping to get that in this month as well. And then um, there's a fall page that I had picked out and it has it's basically a border to color, and then the, the main focus of the page is a fall bucket list. So I kind of wanted to do a fall, um, you know, fall coloring and fill out my bucket list video. I thought that would be fun too. So those are in the works. I'm hoping, hoping I can get it all done before the end of the month. Um, my main goal is to get a bunch of that film this week because next week my work schedule is a little crazy again. So I really need to use my days this week and kind of pre-film and get it all done. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. Let me move this up and I'm going to work on another branch here. And I need to think about what kind of pencils I want to use. Actually, I have not used pencil at all in this book. So, I guess the paper is similar to like a Creative Haven. Maybe a little thicker even. So I'm thinking it should do fairly well with most any pencil. The paper has a bit of tooth to it, but it is it is a decent thickness. I'm trying to make sure I don't have a bunch of lines here. This is my method for no lines. I know some people do the, you know, they just draw the straight lines going all the way through. I just don't have the patience for that. <laughs> but I do find that if I go back over where it looks, and I'm not pressing hard when I go back over, I'm just kind of brushing, that it does kind of fill in the area fairly well. I don't know. I'm not looking through the camera, though, so I'm not sure what you're seeing. Maybe it looks patchier that way, but 
really, if I end up going over it with a uh, colored pencil, it is not going to matter as much anyway, because I can kind of mask that. I'm still not sure if I will or not. I think I'm probably going to color a uh, woolly worm and see what tones it ends up being before I mess with the branches anymore because I don't want them to blend in with the with the branch too much. I apologize if I'm too sniffly today. I feel like the allergies are kicking up again. Probably because it's warmer outside again. We've had a late growing season this year. I just started getting cherry tomatoes from the garden uh, just maybe a couple weeks ago. And um, I had green beans briefly. <laughs> I had so many green beans and we, we got... Um, I did get at least two and a half big bowls full out of the garden and I didn't want to pick them all at once because I knew we wouldn't eat them all up. So I was leaving a bunch out there still and we were, I was kind of going out, you know, as I needed them for dinner or as people wanted to munch on them. My kids like to eat fresh picked green beans, um, just uncooked, so... Um, I would pick them for that, for like snack time and, um, you know, just leaving them out there cause that way they, I could pick them as I go. Well, I went out uh, a few days ago and there were all these little tiny furry, well, I guess caterpillar type things on the leaves and then I saw all these yellow, they look like big yellow ladybugs. And apparently they are bean beetles and they will destroy your green bean plants. Um, and it said they are most prevalent in July, late July and August. And I mean, it is September now, so I guess they're late this year too. But my green beans didn't even start producing until mid-August um, but yeah there's so many out there and they were all chewed up by these nasty beetles so that was disappointing I mean at least we did get to enjoy oh, I went out the outside of the lines we did get to enjoy a fair amount of them so there's that um, and then I've gotten a bunch of green peppers, and they're still producing. I've got a basil plant out there that's huge now, so that is doing well. Um, and then the zucchini. So I have one zucchini plant, and it has produced the biggest zucchini I've ever seen in my entire life. And I mean, I have done almost nothing with it and I, I'll have to, I'll pop a picture up of the, the biggest one we've gotten so far. Um, I've gotten three out like that and I am like, I have pinned tons of zucchini recipes cause I'm trying to figure out how to use them up. I gave one away. Um, because I've made this, um, it was this chocolate lover's zucchini bread, which turned out really well. And my kids really, really liked, but I've made it twice now and it has only used up, um, not even a half of the zucchini. And then I did some sauteed zucchini for dinner one night, um, with some garlic and my kids like that too. And 
that only use like an eighth of the thing. <laughs> and that's just one of them. So I have this massive one and I went out into the garden yesterday and I have another one, another giant one that's like ready to be picked. And then two more that are on their way, plus another bloom. So I'm just, I don't know what to do with all the zucchini. <laughs> There are some really good looking recipes out there. I need to make some more of those, but it's insane. They're huge. We weighed the one, the, the massive one, and it is 10 pounds. Um, it is huge. And then my sister, I gave my sister one, and um, <laughs> she has a corgi. And she couldn't believe how big the one I gave her was. And <laughs> she sends me a picture of, of her corgi laying next to the giant zucchini. <laughs> and it's like about as big as he is. I'll see. I can, I'll see if I can pop the picture of that up here too. Because it's too cute. Um... Yeah, it's crazy. Although, funnily enough, I, every time I tried to order zucchini from the grocery store, um, I'd always get the notification that that was out of stock. So I guess I'm getting it all now. <laughs> we do have a plan to um, take maybe, maybe not a whole one, but a half of one. And um, I have a, a zoodler to make the zucchini noodles uh, and I'm going to zoodle them up and then freeze them so my kids won't eat those but my husband and I will so so that is the plan for some of it I need to get going on using uh, some more of it because I don't want it to go bad. I hate to throw away food. Um, but yeah, we can only eat so much zucchini. <laughs> okay, let's see. I think I may... I think I may try to pull some pencils and start attempting a woolly worm... Uh, so let me grab those and I will be right back. All right, so I went with the castle art set that I have and I uh, found an image on Google. So I will put up a picture of what I looked at. Um, I was surprised. I thought that, um, wait, let me go ahead and show you the colors and then I will talk. Um, so I chose the ivory black mostly for the black parts but I am going to do a base of black in the orangey part because um, you can see the black in uh, between the fur or the fuzz whatever it is and um, so then I have some darker ready oranges that I picked so I, I have the Chinese orange the burnt ochre and the terracotta yeah terracotta give a little bit more of a brownish tone in there and then I also pulled out a couple of grays to put in with the black to hopefully break up the black and make it look more dimensional uh, so I have a cool gray here it's quite a charcoal um, looking gray and then I have Davies gray which is uh, more of a brownish toned gray so we'll see we'll see what happens um, all right so we're going to work on this guy here, and I'm just going to give him a base. Let me move those out of the way. I'm just going to give his... Uh, underneath a base of the black. Uh, like I said, I am winging it here, so... We'll see what happens. Um, 
but I do want when you look through that you don't want to be able to see any white it should be black at the base so we're gonna add that first and then hope that my other colors go on top of it the way I want them to oh so I was saying the I thought when I was calling it a woolly worm that that was just like you know the kitty way that I was always told about it and the only way I knew what it was called. No, it's actually the caterpillar version is actually called a woolly worm or it's also called a banded woolly bear or a woolly bear in the caterpillar form. In the moth form, it is an Isabella tiger moth which I did not know. All right, so we've got our base and then I'm trying to decide if I want to, I think that I'm gonna start with the terracotta here. And this is It's going to be rough to go over this black. That's okay. It's going to take some layers, I know. And I'm just using little... Little short strokes. So in the end, it looks hopefully like fur. <laughs> um, let's just work my way up to the darkest color. I think these guys are so cute. They're like one of the few uh, creepy crawly creatures that I will handle. <laughs> Turn my pencil more often so I get the nice sharp lines. Um, hmm, I don't know whether I should go back over with another layer. I'm going to try it. We'll see. Hopefully it doesn't muddy it up too much. So I went back to my lightest shade. That's the terracotta. intensify some of that. I feel like I'm still seeing too much of the white of the paper. All right, let's go back to the burnt ochre.
little crazy there. Make sure that he looks more orangey than black. Okay, and then we're going to finish it off with the Chinese orange one more time. And that may be as good as it gets here. All right, I am going to go with it. It's not perfect. I'm sure somebody else could do it way better, but um, that is what I can do. So we're going to leave it at that. And let's see, I'm trying to figure out how I want to do. All right, I'm just kind of experimenting here. So I'm going to take the charcoal gray and I'm going to kind of use that as my base for the black areas. So now that I'm actually using pencil on this paper, I am finding it is quite toothy, <laughs> quite a bit more toothy than I initially thought. All right, step one is kind of mask some of that white. And then I am gonna add just some lighter fur and then we'll go back over with the black. Okay, grab the black here. I may not even use that lightest gray color at all because I don't feel like that is black cracked. Okay, maybe blue in the light for a second. All right, and then we're just gonna actually I should start it down this way first so it's kind of overlapping. Ooh, that one's a scratchy one. My goodness. There is a point on that black that is like coloring with a rock. That's not pleasant. That's the first one in this uh, castle art set that I've had like that. I haven't come across any other terribly. I feel like they're too uniform here. They need to kind of be going everywhere. They're like crazy little fluffy porcupine things. So a little too uniform there, I think. Oh, there's that rocky part again. Goodness. Yikes. Well, that was my dog, if you heard that. She doesn't like the scratchy pencils either. Yep, I know, Pip. All right, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it is... Oh, goodness, that rocky part of that. What is that? Well, that certainly adds a bit of a challenge to it. Coloring with these. All right, like I said, I'm experimenting. I may end 
up changing my method around for the next guy. We'll see. little better. Give it some definition around the edges. And then I've got the crazy fluffy mess here. All right. I do need to sign off though. It is time for me to get ready for work. So if I don't do a follow-up video on this, I will for sure have it to show in my completed pages for the month. So um, you can watch out for it there. And thank you so much for sticking around and watching me uh, work through a page here. And I will see you in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.